Hello, welcome to Talking and Reading from Japan by Hidemi Woods. I'll read episodes from my books I wrote and talk about them here. I hope you enjoy the show with me. Hi, this is your host, Hitemi Woods. I'll read an episode from my book, An Old Tree in Kyoto. Today's episode is called Rainbow Town. This is about the shopping mall that I experienced for the first time in my life when I was a child. Rainbow Town. I like to spend my free time at a shopping mall. The first mall I had ever visited as a small child was called Rainbow Town. When it was built, people made noise about it because it was the first underground mall in Western Japan. Probably the first mall either on the ground or underground. The neighbors and the relatives of my family asked, Did you go to Rainbow Town yet? as daily greetings. My grandfather was fascinated by the concept of a mall. He often talked with wonder about what an artificial town was like. And how it could exist underground. Since the mall was located in the city next to ours, my grandparents and I finally went there one day by train. Although the destination was a mall, our purpose was sightseeing rather than shopping. My grandfather kept talking about his concern over sufficient air in the underground mall, while my grandmother got up early in the morning to fix lunch for all of us. We were headed for a mall as if we were going to NASA. The mall was crowded with cool urban shoppers and had a stream and big fountain along the walk. I had never seen so many shops and restaurants gathering in one place. My grandparents were amazed that the mall was so bright with full electricity and decorative with water. They also couldn't believe that there were restaurants which used the fire to cook though it was underground. My grandfather reminded me over and over that people and cars were passing through above us. Because all the benches were taken, we sat on the rim of the fountain for lunch. We had my grandmother's handmade rice balls and Japanese tea from our ca- canteen there. Right in front of us was a nice restaurant where many customers had their decent lunch and a good time. My grandfather said to me triumphantly, Do you know how much they have to pay in there? They're stupid. We left for, we left for home without eating or buying anything at the mall. My first mall experience wasn't so good, but I love a shopping mall so much still. I grew up in a small town in Kyoto. My hometown was so small and rural that Only few, barely, 
few mom and pop shops were spotted in the neighborhood. Of course, there was a downtown district at the center of Kyoto. But I seldom went there. Maybe once or twice a year for special occasions. Not to browse or shop around there. None of my family members or neighbors went there. So regularly, and so we, it wasn't our custom to shop in the in such a big shopping area. So when this shopping mall called Rainbow Town opened, it was a huge fuss in my neighborhood because the mall promoted itself fiercely. Its ad was all over local newspapers. Every day, and their local commercial, commercial TV commercials were aired every day on TV. So I saw the commercials many times. Every day, so I still remember the jingle of the commercial. Osaka Minami no Niji no Machi, something like that, and it opened in Osaka. It it it's a it's the big city in Japan. Actually, it's the second biggest city in Japan, which is located in the western part of Japan. And my hometown was in Kyoto. That is the next city to Osaka. Kyoto. Is a relatively big city too, but it's famous for mainly sightseeing, with old shrines and temples and buildings and streets. But Osaka is the big urban city. So, needless to say, our family seldom went there. But when this mall opened in Osaka, it drew our attention immensely, and especially. My grandfather, he he was kind of obsessed with it. He really wanted to go there. He 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 thought he has he had to go there because basically he loved to go out. He couldn't. 
breathe without going out with no particular purpose. And I was raised with my grandparents and I lived with them when I lived in my hometown. And my, one day my grandfather decided to go there, the newly opened Rainbow Town, with my grandmother and I, with me. Was, uh, Osaka was uh, uh, about, about, at that time, 90 minutes, 90 minute train ride from my home. So it was a, a quite a trip for us. Three of us headed for the mall. And the mall was rather a underground city than just a shopping mall. I wasn't used to being used to seeing a shopping mall at all. So to me that was a whole new world. I was amazed at it. The shops and restaurants uh, the in the same place, like a, like an artificial, artificial town, and on top of that, it existed underground, and my grandfather also was excited about the site and we strolled around and around and my grandfather kept saying cars are cars are running over our head people are walking over our head right now right here above our heads there were people there were cars there are shops and houses and streets right above our heads he kept saying that over and over he was so excited went around and around without shopping. Oh, I have to remind you, my grandparents were extremely stingy. He, they, they, they seldom bought things. They, they were just so stingy. So they had any intention to buy anything at the mall. Their purpose to be there was, was strictly to see the place, not to shop, 
not to spend money. So we just, three of us, were just walking around, seeing, and went walking around and around and around, and it, it became the lunchtime. We were hungry. And there appeared my grandmother's handmade rice balls and Japanese tea from our canteen. We sat on the, on the rim of the fountain brought from home instead of eating out at a at a nice beautiful restaurant I was at that time I was maybe four or five years old and by then I I think I got used to be used to be with them being so stingy. But even so, I noticed something odd. Something is weird to have lunch, to have lunch outside the restaurant, inside the mall. Nobody did that. Nobody brought lunch from home to the mall. While we were while we were eating our lunch by the fountain, of course people were looking at us, stared at us because we were doing something very odd in the mall. Although we were, we were weird, my grandfather laughed at people who were having lunch in the restaurant. He, he thought they were weird. Because they, they paid so much there. He couldn't believe they did that knowing that stepping outside and eating outside would cost them cost them so much less. So he kept saying they're stupid, stupid, paying so much in there. Why don't they step out and eat outside and save money? But to me, essentially, my grandfather looked looked stupid. We were so strange on 
that day in the mall. My grandparents always did something like that. That was their characters. They always did their own ways, had their own ways, and had to do their own ways. And no one did those ways. Although others didn't do those things, they, my grandparents didn't stop their ways. They stuck to their own ways. To follow, follow their ways, even though I noticed their ways were extremely strange. Uh, that's I, but they raised me. They raised me their own ways, and probably that was what that was. That's why I'm strange even now when I grew up. When I become a grown up, I. Still, I'm still strange compared to others. That's all my grandparents' fault, I guess. Well, that's all for today. And I hope you come back soon. And join me again. Thanks for listening. I'm Hidemi Woods. Until next time, take care and be well. Audiobook. The Family in Kyoto, One Japanese Girl Got Freedom by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple Books, Google Play, Audible, 43 available distributors in total.